The surge wrasse can change its sex, kind of like a clownfish. Hi, what's going on everybody? My name is Brandon. I'm a marine biologist and an artist. Welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with the ocean and its creatures with you. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the animals that live in them. Nature Meets Paper is a place where we can learn about aquatic animals through science, stories, and art. Today we're going to be discovering the surge wrasse. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Thalassoma papurium, I hope I'm saying that correctly, are commonly known as surge wrasse. They can be found in surge zones of outer reefs, reef margins, and rocky coastline. They are a tropic to subtropic species of fish. They are found in the Indo-Pacific Ocean. The Indo-Pacific Ocean is a common name for the area including the Indian and Pacific Oceans. They range from East Africa to India, Australia, Japan, Hawaii, and Easter Island. Surge wrasse are found in the surge zone, which is 0 to 10 meters deep. This area of water has high movement and is affected by currents and waves. What are we looking for when identifying the surge wrasse? This is a brightly colored fish that is a favorite among snorkelers, divers, and aquariums. Since it is a wrasse, it has a wrasse-shaped body. This body style is commonly known as spindle-shaped, tapered at both ends and thick in the middle. This body style is great for cruising through the water. Their primary propulsion is from their body and caudal fin or tail fins. Most of their dorsal and ventral surface is lined with a few spines and several soft rays. They are found in groups of several females with few males. This is known as a harem. Surge wrasse grow to maximum length of 46 centimeters or 18 inches in length, where males are larger than females. Surge wrasse are incredible fish. They are bright blue and green with accents of pink, orange, and red. They are green on the dorsal surface and deeper blue on the ventral surface. Two to three stripes of orange, pink, or red line the body from head to tail. This red pattern breaks up the face and is individual to the fish. It is said females have a distinct V-shape near their nose. Males apparently don't have this V-shape all surge wrasse are born as females and turn into males as needed. This is like the behavior of clownfish, but clownfish go from male to female when needed. They have large mouths with sharp pointy teeth. This is a characteristic of the wrasse. Why would surge wrasse need sharp teeth? This is a great question. It leads into our next segment of the adventure. What do surge wrasse eat and how are they doing? They eat small invertebrates, including crab, sea urchin, brittle star, mollusks, small fish species, and polychaetes. They are active hunters. They need sharp teeth to grasp prey. It would be different if their food didn't try to swim away or didn't have a hard shell. How are the surge wrasse doing? The IUCN red list has them listed as least concern. This is great news. They don't have a commercial fishery and are used in aquarium trade. The surge wrasse eat many species of animals and reproduce relatively quickly. This helps population health. It is the animals that are picky eaters and reproduce slowly that we need to worry about.
This is the segment of our adventure where we learn about my encounter with the Surge Rass. The Surge Rass is a fast-moving, cruising kind of fish. This means it doesn't sit still for very long. My camera is an older Canon model. Sometimes in low light situations, it can't keep up with fast moving objects. I needed to maximize the settings of my camera. I'm still learning the settings, but finally got them right for a clear picture of this fish. The surge wrasse was swimming in its encounter back and forth at high speeds. This is such a beautiful fish, I wanted to capture it for you. It was also the first time that I've seen one. I've seen a ring-tailed wrasse before, which is similar, but this wrasse was so much brighter and had incredible patterns to it. I had to share it with you. I took several photos of this fish. They all turned out blurry. I didn't want to get in the way of other people who were waiting patiently, but I had to get a clear photo. I used my own photos as reference photos for this series. I finally got one that was amazing. The blues, greens, and red slash pinks were all vibrant and clear. I could see all of the details of this fish for my paintings. And with that, I will end this adventure. Thank you so much for watching. If I deserve it, click subscribe and ring the notification bell. This way you can be notified when I post new content. I do my best to post new content every single weekend, but sometimes life gets in the way or a painting is too detailed for me to finish in a week. If you would like to support this channel so that I can continue creating content for everyone uh, by going on adventures and sharing this information, uh, raising awareness, you can purchase this art. I sell my art in the forms of the originals as well as museum quality prints. Now your originals are going to cost you $12 per linear inch, a limited edition print is going to run you $6 a linear inch, and an unlimited, which is your cheapest option, is going to be $3 a linear inch. If art is not what you're into, or if not what you want to buy, I also sell merchandise and apparel on Teespring. Links are down below. If you don't want t-shirts and you just want to support me directly, you can become a patron on my Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Brandon, and I'll see you in our next adventure.